Ready. Are, we are back at it. Okay, so Omzal Watts Law is super, super powerful because it enables you to find out what the resistance is without using an ohm meter. Now, while we're on that topic, here's my ohm meter. And what does the ohm meter measure? Ohms. That's correct. Now, there's a couple of things you got to be very, very careful about using an ohm meter. They start with the word never. Never use an ohm meter on a powered circuit. Now, Let's do another little simple circuit. In fact, this is a circuit we did on the last page, right? So it shouldn't be complicated or anything like that. Jimmy Rodriguez, it's so good to see you. I'm so happy now. Made my evening. Made my evening, buddy. Uh, what? I just finished unloading into the house we just bought. So Tony Trademas just bought a house? Good for him. <laughs> Be heading back to our rental to shower in an hour. My house doesn't have internet yet. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, at least I heard from him, I guess. That's good. All right. So, Daryl, did you get the invitation? Oh, is Daryl? Yeah, Daryl, did you get the invitation for Electude? Should have had it by now. Huh? There you go. Yes, you did. Uh, I said I'm scared to check it on my computer because I'm all here. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, I'll do it after the meeting or something. Yeah, I'll text you if it wasn't it didn't come through. Okay. In theoretical theoretical circuits, we assume, because it's theoretical, we assume that conductor resistance is zero. Right, because when we do this exercise, the only resistance we're counting is the load. But that's not really how it works, but it's pretty close. And besides, we use the theoretical circuit to illustrate the principle. But this all has resistance, but it better be very low resistance, I'll tell you that much. Because remember, any resistance you have is going to create heat, I squared R. I keep going back to that I squared R because it's really important. That's current squared times the resistance. Are these wires going to get hot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Watch this. What determines how hot those wires are going to get? The amount of power going through it? Good, but you said it wrong. Okay. The, the, amount, of, current, the amount of current. Current is what creates the heat, right? But okay. yeah, you know, since power is proportional to current, yeah, you're correct. All right, can I turn? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right, let me see. Right here, still talking about ohmmeters. Let's talk about resistance for a while before we get there. That's a bulb. Four ohms. This thing right here is an arrow. Lights use different arrows. That's a resistor with a big arrow in it. 
And when you see the resistor with a big arrow in it, you know that this is a variable. Variable resistor. Now we've already established that circuit resistance determines and controls <coughs> the current <coughs> measured in amps. Yep. So what do you think the purpose of this variable resistor is in the circuit? What is it, what's it doing? It's changing it according to the, what it needs. <laughs> If I sweep this variable resistor from low resistance to high resistance, what's the bulb going to do? It's going to dim it. Or I'll turn it off, either one. So, so this could be like a dimmer switch. Yeah. yeah. OK, that makes sense. <coughs> Coronavirus. Yeah. Wow, you got loud rats. <laughs> Some of the rats. I thought you were kidding about the rats. No, I wish. Terrorizing me. Wow. Well, I got a bunch of rat eating mongrels over here. Okay, so a variable resistor is like a dimmer switch or a volume. <laughs> because the more resistance we have in the circuit, the less current we're going to have. That's how it works. No, so it's just if you have something you want to turn off or make it less coming through. Yeah, yeah. If you want the fan to go slower, or if you want the your dash light is a perfect example of a variable resistor. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Okay, so we're still talking about ohmmeters. Don't ever use an ohmmeter on a powered circuit. Now we got this here, like this. And then I've got, I don't know, let's just say a, a motor. Doesn't matter. You need to move your paperwork up a little bit, Roku. We're losing the bottom of it. Thank you, man. Is the red lead positive or negative? What was that? Is the red lead positive or negative? Uh, negative? Uh, what? Positive. Positive. Red lead? Red lead is positive. Negative. Okay, so I'm testing the resistance of this motor. Okay. Notice that I don't positive. have it in a powered circuit. I don't have it in a powered circuit. If you put it in a powered circuit, you'll blow up the meter or the circuit. It's bad. Don't do it. That's why I don't really I don't off, often I don't teach ohmmeters until students are pretty advanced. Because ohmmeters you can get yourself in trouble in. Volt meters Nah, you'll never cause a problem. Okay, so I'm testing this motor, and it says, I don't know, 16 ohm. Wow. So here's the problem. Can I base an Ohm's law calculation on this motor's resistance when it's not running? No. 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 Because first of all, once it uh, once it uh, starts turning, it's going to change the resistance. But also because when it gets hot, it's going to change the resistance. All I'm doing here is I'm checking for continuity. And we were talking earlier about uh, circuits, and the circuit has to have continuity, which is to say a continuous path for current to flow. As you can see right here, we got a continuous path, so we know the current's going to flow. Unless this resistance gets so high, it basically acts as a switch, right? OK, so continuity is a resistance test. It is an ohmmeter test. It's a special type of ohmmeter. 
but it wants to see if there's a continuous path for current to flow. Now this little lovely has a continuity test on it. You can see right there, mm. it has this thing that looks like a horn. <laughs> yeah. That's a continuity test. And what happens is, if I have a continuous path between this lead and this, this lead and this lead, hear that? Can you hear that? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's testing for continuity. I mean, I could test that knife, and I could go from here to here. See, it's got continuity. It's also got a lot of resistance. All that resistance is caused by rust. No continuity. That's interesting. You see that? That's a steel knife, folks. Why is it showing no continuity? Because it's so rusty. If you want to find out if it's got continuity, see how pointy the end? No. See how pointy the end of uh, this end is? Yeah. It's pointy for a reason. That's so you can stab the hell out of it. That is so weird. You're on a rust spot. Yeah, must be, really. There you go. Yeah. That's my dad's old K bar from World War II. That sounds great. That's great nice. But that's not the point. The <laughs> point is, we're searching for continuity, right? And we should expect, I guess I should have used this for YouTube. You're like, oh my God, pull it off YouTube. He's using a knife. Stickler. <laughs> now, if I don't push too hard, oxidation on the surface keeps it from showing. What the hell? Must have a lacquer finish. There we go. Hear that? Continuity checker is useful. Let's see. All right, so when we're checking for continuity, we're checking for a continuous path for current to flow. Like I said, right here, we're not really testing for resistance. What we're looking for is, does it have continuity? And I'll show you why that's important. You done with this? Yeah. Okay. Here's a light bulb. And then you're going to have this thing here, and then you're going to have this thing here. That's how light bulbs operate. Now, over here, yeah. you've got this, which is connected to ground, and it's got the filament. Mm -hmm. And then it's got this thing that goes to the other part of the filament, but they're not touching. First of all, is that bulb going to light? No. No, because if you put it in a circuit, this resistance is so high, you're going to get zero current. Right. But can you test this with an ohmmeter? Yeah. Come in here with an ohmmeter. <coughs> Coronavirus. Go like that. Go like this. That's wrong. Shoot, sorry about that. I got too excited because I got scared when Jim coughed. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> sorry. Now, my question to you is, this filament is bad. How much resistance is it going to show? Hi. Infinite. Good, because most people think it's going to show zero resistance. That's the opposite of the truth. It's going to show O L. Just like that. Mm. And O L means out, wizards, out of limits, which means the resistance is so high that you can't even measure it. Basically, we have what we call 
infinite resistance. Now, if I'm testing a bulb or using a continuity with either an ohmmeter or a continuity tester, since they're both uh, ohmmeter, and I get infinite resistance, what does that tell me about the bulb? It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Now you got to be careful and poke that, poke those pokey things in hard. Make sure you're getting an accurate reading. But if it says infinite resistance, you got a bad bulb. Now, here's. The bonus question right here. <laughs> Maybe I'll go like this. So I come in like this. And I got my ohmmeter right here. And I measure this right there. And I measure this right there. Ah. If that says four ohms, whatever, it doesn't matter. Is the bulb good? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's got continuity. If you run enough current through it, it will light. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes, you know, maybe this is supposed to have one ohm and now it's got 20 ohms. That's wrong. You know, you test fuel injectors the same way. They're supposed to have, what, 12 ohms, something like that. You just go down and pop, 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 pop. Who cares? Now, I put the black here and I put the red here, but that doesn't matter because ohm meters are not polarized. Now, you know how if I took the red lead and I put it on the negative post of the battery and I took the black lead and I put it on the positive post of the battery, it would just give me a minus sign? That's because DC is polarized. That means it has a positive and a negative, a plus and a minus, a black and a red. Alternating current isn't polarized. I mean, you can check AC volts or AC amps. And it doesn't matter because everything's going like this anyway. It's not polarized. It will just read the amount of voltage or current or whatever. Huh. Ohm meters are not polarized either. So if I took the red and black and went like this, it's going to give me the same reading. Okay. It doesn't matter. Good to know so you don't freak out, so you don't waste a lot of time with ohm meters. But I'll tell you, ohm meters on a test like this is very quick and easy. Pull the bulb out, check it with an ohmmeter or a continuity tester. You got this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Continuity tester has limits. Right there. Yeah. Beware. Continuity testers will not beep if the resistance is over, and I don't know why this is, 52 ohms. So you're having fun playing with your continuity tester, la da da. And it keeps going beep, 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 beep. But if you test something that's over 52 ohms, it won't beep. And you'll say to yourself, okay, well, I got an open motor. I got a bad motor. But it turns out the motor had like 200 ohms resistance. Watch out. Don't get burned on this. That's a bad way to get burned. That's how I know. So if you have a good continuity tester, it's not only going to tell you the beep, See, it gives you the beep, but it's also giving you the resistance. Now, why is that reading keep jumping around? Anybody remember what I said about what you do if you keep getting a, meet, a, meet, a reading that's jumping around? That it's the surface charge or whatever? 
It's not surface charge. It's corrosion on the surface. You oh. Press harder. Oh. You just got to press harder. Oh, that's right. Okay. Point three. Yeah, see if it stays stable. And look, I don't care if it stays stable for 15 minutes. If it stays stable for four seconds, I'm going to call that the measurement. A win. Well, for instance, as for me, when I'm trying to look, when you're, when you're a professional mechanic, you got to do stuff quick. And if I find that the battery is good, but there's no current flow, I know to look elsewhere, like to the socket maybe, or to the connectors, or to the switch. But I'm just going to test the bulb really quick because that's such a common cause of failure. See, it's all the process of elimination, right? You've got a circuit, and then you just start testing each part of the circuit as fast as you can. That's why I'm going to start out with a ammeter test, usually. You can check for voltage of the bulb. You know, depending on the circuit is going to depend on how you test it. Questions, thoughts on that? Oh, so you have to have a critical a critical mind in in working on cars, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot like uh, medical. <laughs> it is. It's exactly yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's continuity tester. That's ohmmeter test. Watch out for testing motors. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about this probably next week. That right there is a coil. Didn't I teach you about coil solenoids, transformers, and relays? That's a coil. Coils are made up of very thin wire. Well, what do we know about wire? Conductor. Yep. Yeah. I mean. Wires are rated by their ampacity. Resistance goes up as it gets hot. Ampacity is the capacity to carry current. Now, why don't you tell me what you know about the ampacity of a very thin wire? It's very low. It's very low, yeah. Now, the wire is made of copper. Copper is a pretty soft metal, which means it has a low melting point. Low. And what happens when it gets too hot? Well, here's my question. There's two types of heat, right? Mm -hmm. There's ambient and there's internal and external. Yeah, pretty much. There's the heat caused by current, I swear it all. And there's the ambient temperature, which is the temperature around. So do these little thin wires, do they know the difference between ambient temperature and current? Temperature? No, they don't. No, all they care is don't get me too hot. Right. Now, coils, most people in this industry, I got to tell you, hot. to answer your question, Michelle, most people in this industry don't know how to do this simple test. As a result, they end up replacing a bunch of stuff that's perfectly good. Now, you're going to see coils everywhere. You're going to see coils on fuel injectors, uh, all your solenoids. All your relays, all your transformers, all your um, Relay. motors. Yeah, all your motors. And if you can't do this simple test, according to me, you need to back off that car. Yeah, I agree. I agree with guessing. that. You're just guessing at that point. That's scary. Now, remember, usually when I'm testing a coil, I'm not really testing it for resistance. Usually, I'm not testing it for resistance. Yeah. I'm testing it for uh, continuity. Okay. Now, Broke lift. Can you lift the book up some so I can see it? Okay. okay. Muchos gracias. Thank you. I... 
Hooray! <laughs> All right. Questions, comments, thoughts on that? No. Making good progress. Something tells me it's a time for a visit from Sancho. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Okay. Now, I didn't have all that yet, Rope Cliff. I didn't have it yet. I couldn't see it. You want to pick it up off the video? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Tell you what, take a picture of it with your camera real quick, yeah? Okay. I got to get... Oh, well. Couple, you can turn it now. I got it. All right. I just need to see that last one. All right. Thank you. Now, usually, we're not going to see one load on a circuit. Now, a starter motor, we're going to see one load on a circuit. But like a lighting circuit, we're not going to see one load on a circuit. What we're going to see is this. No, you want to see more pulse. There's your battery. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Minus and plus. And then I'm going to have a bulb over here. You know, I'm going to have a switch and I'm going to have a fuse, but we'll talk about that later. And I got a bulb over here. Now, I'm going to take the positive and I'm going to hook it there and I'm going to hook it there. And I'm going to have the negative and I'm going to hook it there and I'm going to hook it there. What's that little hump mean? Oh, sorry. What's that little hump mean? It's not connected. Yeah, crossing but not connected. Good. Okay. Now, if this one's drawing three amps, and this one's drawing three amps, what's my total current? What's my total current flow? Six. Six amps. Six. Good. How'd you know that? That's amazing. Good. Really good. Good. Now, if I was to draw that circuit, I would go like this. And I would go here to a bulb. And I would go here to a bulb. Three amps, three amps. This is that. That's a parallel circuit. That's a parallel circuit, yeah. Now, my question to you is, how many volts is each bulb getting? Twelve. 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 Yeah. Each bulb's getting 12 volts. See, you can see from right here. Yeah. Each bulb's getting 12 volts, and each bulb is drawing 3 amps. So what's my total current draw? Mm -hmm. Six amps. Six amps, good. Okay, so, Six amps, yeah. So here's the thing. If three Sancho's jump in this window and three Sancho's jump in this window, <laughs> how, how many Sancho's come down the street? Six. Six. And then how many Sancho's go running down the alley? Six. Six. Yeah. All right. So. Six. How's that? But the resistance is lower in a parallel circuit. Yeah, but Rudy, I can't go there yet. I mean, this 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 gets kind of hard for people. So. Uh, <laughs> nah. Okay. So you got a fuse. Oh, yeah, let's see. Fifteen amp. Yep. And then also, it's got this thing right here. Old school. And it says 15. No. Yeah. Okay. And it says 32 volt. These are all fuses. What does a fuse do? It, pro it protects the circuit from overload. Meaning too much current, right? I mean, too much current. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, let's go here. You got that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
oozes are in the family of overcurrent protection <coughs> so if you're an electrician you would call this an OCPD overcurrent protection devices protect circuits from too much current. Now my question to you is, current creates heat, right? Is that what we're trying to avoid? Yeah. Yeah, good. Now, just to make sure you understand, if I have more current flow than I'm supposed to, that means my resistance is too what? Low. Good. Wonderful. Wow. Good for you. Yep. Okay. So we only have low. Yeah. Twelve volts. Huh. I'm gonna put a fuse right there because that's the sign. And this says uh, how much is that? Six amps. Now, what's this fuse going to do? See, I got a fuse that looks like this. It's tying this to this, this little wing a ding thing. <coughs> what's this fuse going to do if I try to pass too much current through this thin piece? Break. It's going to blow open up. Yeah, it's going to open up. And we call that a blown, blown burn. Fuse. Now, just to make sure we're clear, a blown fuse. This right here has zero resistance. How much we had one of those in our last Hi. negative <laughs> Yeah. Rudy, your microphone sucks. You want me to draw Infinite. It? That is correct. So all current flow stops, right? It's mm -hmm. my internet connection. Yep. Need to get wired up, buddy? Yeah, it's Trump's fault. God damn it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I, I hope everybody's recognizing how good the economy used to be. Um, <laughs> used to. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what rating should I give this fuse to protect a circuit that's supposed to, oh, sorry, that's supposed to draw six amps? 15 amps. As close to six amps as possible. Nah. No, because they're 7.5 amps, but I wouldn't use the 7.5. What if this voltage goes high? You know, if that voltage goes a little bit high, you're going to get more current. It's going to blow that fuse. Usually, we'd probably put it on a 10. Usually, we run these like 80%. Okay. Now, here's the thing. That was my second question. Answer. Why don't we put it at 50 amps? They'll Those take away some of the power. Okay. No. No? Because then you're not protecting the wires. You're not really not, not the wire. Yeah. You're, protecting you're not protecting the, the wires in the circuit. Yeah, exactly. Now, what I saw a lot back when I was working in L.A., what I saw a lot was people were hooking up stereos with no fuse. Oh, um, wow. I'm talking about a wire this big, this big, <laughs> coming off of the battery with no fuse. So if, it, if it wore through, it would just burn the battery. Yeah. Uh, me. You know, so this, I mean, not me. <laughs> if I'm looking at a stereo installation, I'm usually going to look at the fuse first. Fuse should be as close to the battery as you can get it, but it should have a fuse. Um. Okay, remember, the whole idea is to protect the circuit. Now, this right. wire has to have... Tomas the just left. What? Didn't hear you, Rudy. 
Okay. Something, okay. something just left. Tomas left. Oh. oh. Tomas left. That's too bad. Well, I hope it comes back soon. So my point was that something came up. He said. Oh. Okay. These wires have to have a minimum ampacity of what? Ten amps at least, right? Should be more like fifteen, twenty. You got this? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I got a question, Rokla. Yes, sir. You said it, the uh, thing. The wire had to at least hold ten amps. Yep. For twelve amps. Well, twelve volts. Yep. Volts doesn't matter when it, when you're choosing wires. At least not for conductors. What matters is the ampacity, the amp carrying capacity, right? If I want to flow a lot of water, I got to have a big pipe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. this is few amps. Let's call that a number 12. This is okay. many amps. Let's call that a number two. Now, why don't we just run super big wires all over the car then? If it's you don't need that much power. Mm -hmm. in Real expensive, yeah? Plus, it takes up all kinds of room, right? You don't want a bunch of big cables going to your ignition switch. Right. So we're going to choose the wire size based on the amount of current that we're expecting to flow through it. That's why you can look at the wires in a vehicle and you can make some assumptions about how much current is flowing through them. Yeah. Did we talk about this? Because it'll just take a moment. Yes, we did. Did we talk? But it won't hurt to go over it again. No, I'm talking about this. Oh. Talk about that. Uh, that doesn't look good to me. This is a solid wire. That's what you use in houses okay. because they're not moving. What's this? Um, okay, strand. That's stranded. Yep. And we use stranded wire anywhere there's going to be movement. Okay. More resistance mm -hmm. here than there is there. Less ampacity here than there is there. But you're going to see stranded all over the car because everything's moving all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, pretty happy with that. Want to go to the next page? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> I think I'm going to show you how to do this before I explain it, or maybe I'll just have you do it before I explain it. I'm in class. I'll call you later, okay? okay. okay. Sorry. All right, that's 12 volts. Two bulbs. This is my this is my tail light or my brake lights. Okay, so that's two amps. That's two amps. Are both of those bulbs going to be the same brightness? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. Why? Yes. The same amount of about amps. That is correct. Good for you. Okay. So I have the e same amount of current. But now I'm going to have P, E, I, and R for each one of these. Okay. This is what's going to make you money, Chuck. I'm going to call that P2, E2, I2, R2. R1, I said that. And then I'm going to call these P sub T for total, yeah? Okay. Good. Now, Write down what you know first, right? You know you got 12 volts here. Right. You know you got two amps here. Right. You know you got two amps here. Now, here's my voltmeter. How many volts do I have right here? 12. 12. How many volts do I have right here? 12. How many volts do I have right here? 12. 12. How many volts do I have right here? 12. 12. 12. Right here. 12. So are 12. you saying that each of these bulbs gets 12 volts? Yeah. 
That's correct. Good. Yes. Okay, so put 12 volts here and 12 volts here. And now just run the table. Hurry up. Okay. And then I'll show you how to get this. Okay. Because it's a little bit different. See the the power of Ohm's law and Watt's law is if you know any two of these things, you can you can figure out everything else. Okay, real close. Oh, 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 oh wait, that's ah. squared. So what? Do, I got a question because I never did the pier thing before. Okay. I know I'm catching up a little bit. So what are you adding? The, the you amp? Don't add anything? You multiply up, yeah. you multiply down. So you go two times twelve is what? Twenty four. Twenty four watts, because we know that P is in watts. Twelve divided by two is what? Six. Six what? Ohms. Oh yeah. Ohms. Um, See, six times two is twelve. Two times twelve is twenty four. On this, Daryl, you multiply up and you divide down. Twenty four divided oh. by twelve is two. Twelve divided by two is six. So it's okay. going to be the same over here. Yeah, once you once you get it, I mean, it's like a freaking card trick. Once you get it, it's like really easy. Okay, so here's my question. If two Sancho's jumped in this window and two Sancho's <laughs> jumped in this window, how many Sancho's came out of the uh, Uber? Four. That is correct. <laughs> the current is additive. So the current becomes four because of two. Now, now you can run the table again, right? Uh -huh. Four times twelve is what? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah. Twelve divided by four is what? Three. Three. Yeah. Now here's how it makes sense. If this guy eats twenty-four Oreos and this guy eats twenty-four Oreos, how many Oreos got eaten in total? Forty-eight. Yeah. Easy money. Divide down, multiply up, divide down. Fly up and divide down, yep. To get resistance. And the current divide and, the down. and the watts, yep. Oh. You get everything. Yeah. Multiply up to get the watts, divide down to get resistance. Yeah. In this case, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, this one's, uh, how about two ohms and two ohms? You know, you do it enough, pretty soon you can draw these really fast too. Two, 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 two. Total, total, total. That's 12 volts. So what's my total voltage? Um, 72. 12. That's why. 12. 12. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many volts is each bulb getting? Two. Uh, two. Volts? 12. Oh, volt six. What? 12. Uh, 12. Uh, yeah. 12. See, the voltage is the same everywhere. That's a little hint. Okay, and I've got two ohms here, and I got two ohms there. Run the table, guys. Run the table. Two Six. times what equals twelve? Six. Six. Six what? Um. The oh god, that's where I'm having the problem. And it's, uh, wait a minute, I got it. Amps. It's six amps. Good. And the same thing's going on here, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Seventy-two. Six times what? twelve. Two times 70. six. Twelve. Six times six. twelve is seventy-two. Seventy-two. Yep. Because these are the same, right? So right. they both draw the same current. Okay. Now here's the somewhat tricky part. If six sanchos jumped in this window and six sanchos jumped in this window, how many sanchos came out of the Uber? Twelve. Twelve. And if this guy ate 72 Oreos and this guy ate 72 Whoa. Oreos, how many Oreos got eaten? Yeah. 144. Yep, 144. Oh, wow. So what's the total resistance then? 
Um, it would be 12. 12 divided by one, two. One. Be one. One. That's it. One ohm. One ohm. One ohm. Just so you know, these are called parallel circuits. And it's the most circuit. common circuit in the car. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to go too fast, but you know, I don't want to go too slow either. All right, let me show you something. Twelve volt coming over here. That's four ohms. That's two ohms. Come here. Hey, I figured out a name for your rat. You call it Newsom. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, of course, Governor. Yeah, watch. They'll censor this on YouTube. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or punish us for our behavior. That's a strike. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Once you start ignoring the Constitution, you might as well ignore the whole thing. You know. Right. Right. That's the, that's what's really at stake. Hey, yo, yeah, it's call. gotta kind of put a stop to it right now somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Says, where's the rats at? Where's the rats at? <laughs> like rats. What the heck? Okay, so right down, right down what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, I just rubbed peanut butter all over my face before class starts. Okay, so you got it yet? Uh, no, hang on. Um, I don't know how to do it with two different ones. Oh, wait. Those are homes, okay. Yeah, they're different. Okay, so. And you're going to see what a difference that makes. Okay. I think I got it right. I can't be right. I bet you do. Well, we know we got 12 volts. Got four ohms over here. Got two ohms over here. And folks, if you oh, weren't here oh, 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 last week, or if you don't understand it, be sure to watch the videos. This video will be on YouTube in a couple hours. There we go. Now we got it. Last week's video is already on YouTube. Um, okay, so how do you do it? Daryl, you got it? No, I'm really, I'm really kind of in space right now, to be honest. Okay. Let me walk you through it. I need a computer. Two times or what equals 12? Six. Six. Uh, let me do it with Daryl. Oh, okay, sure. You yeah, got plus twelve. Six. I mean, damn. <laughs> two. Hold up. You said two times six equals twelve. Yeah. Okay. Four times what equals twelve? Six, uh, uh, yeah. Dang, six. Four times what equals twelve? Oh, four times what equals twelve? Yeah. Three. Four times three. three. Good. I'm off, I'm off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. Ever since oh, so you, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a question real quick before you finish. So you use the the ohm to figure out, to multiply the volt yeah. to get the amp. Any two things you have, you can figure out the whole circuit by going up, multiplying up and dividing down. Yeah. yeah. Multiplying up. Now, if I have six amps and 12 volts, how much power do I have? 72. Six times 12 is 72 watts. If I have three amps and 12 volts, how much power do I use? 36. 36 watts. Yeah, you can bring a cheap calculator next time, folks. It'll make your life a lot easier. Yeah, it would. It would. It would, because I'm not off my head figuring the math out. Right. Well, ah. ever since Life PD went into Pomona, I see you've uh, you've been kind of nervous. <laughs> Leave Pomona alone, man. Leave my city alone. <laughs> have, have, have you been watching Live PD? All the Pomona? 
Yeah, they out there. They out there. <laughs> I keep waiting to see one of my students, you know. Maybe. <laughs> Oh okay, so you know, I was dry. this is the worst part. So I'm going to I'm going to CarQuest, and they're talking about how they're being forced to put out hand washing stations for the mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. But I'm going down Holt, and all the prostitutes are out there, and they're not even wearing masks. Yeah, they don't even have hand sanitizer on their tip. <laughs> <laughs> That was close. I was wondering, wondering where you're going to go with that. Um, all right. So can you see that even though both of these bulbs have 12 volts, one's drawing six amps and the other one's drawing three amps. Mm -hmm. So what's going to be true about those bulbs? They have different resistance. They have different resistance, which is causing different current flow, which is causing what? When I look at one's, the bulbs, one's going to be brighter than the other. Good. Which one's going to be brighter? Two. Uh, two. <laughs> More Second power one. consumption. I know the middle one will. Means more work is done. How do we know work is being done? Three ways. Heat. Light, light, motion. That's it. So this bulb is going to be twice as bright. Got the third one. Heat, light, motion. That's okay. it. So this is like a headlight. That's like a tail light, right? Hmm. Let's go ahead and finish the exercise. Mm -hmm. If this draws three amps and that draws six amps, if three Sancho's go in this window, six Sancho's go in this window, how many Sancho's came out of the Uber? Nine Sancho's. Nine. That's correct. Now that's gonna make the numbers kind of funky, but what's nine times 12? Or what's 36 plus 72? Nine times 12 is 108. Yep. You can also do it this way. 36 plus 72 is Add those two. Yeah. That's cool. 12 divided by 9 is what? 0.75 or 0 0.6? 1, 3, 3, 1, what? I got 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. 1, 3, 3, 3? Yeah, I'll believe that. Okay. 1, 3, 3. Yep. That's it. So just do 1, 3, 3. Now I wanted to bring that up to show you, you know, different uh, different um, loads of different resistance on the same circuit, and what the effect is. I mean, it's not it's not really uncommon. Like for instance, your tail lights are going to be way brighter than your third tail light, or if you have a um, third brake light, or if you have like LED lights. <clears throat> If you have LED, no, light, the current flow is going to go way down, right? In fact, we're having problems with the LED lights now because the current flow, they're so efficient that the current flow goes down. And since the current flow goes down, now your flashers won't work. That's why they had to come up with special LEDs that had the same resistance as... Or no load flashers. Aren't those going to draw the same amount of current if they have the same resistance? They don't have the same resistance. So they use different flashers. They just, the timer, there's a timer built into the flasher. The flash is in the set pattern. So they're changing the flashers instead of the bulbs? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, if Rudy don't know, who knows, right? <laughs> you? <laughs> I know what I know, but... Um, Okay, you ready for next? You one? and I had that problem on that one yeah. where we replaced all the tail lights with LEDs, and we had to change the flasher to a no-load flasher. Right. And basically, what it is is the flasher then has a timer built into it, and it goes click, 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 yeah, digital. click, click. Digital. Digital. There's Jim Not. What? That's the first time we've been looking at your fan for freaking. Oh, I know. 
that's probably my biggest fan. But yeah, okay. Okay, so let me ask you a question. And we're back looking at the fan. <laughs> if this circuit draws nine amps, am I going to put a 10 amp fuse in it? Yeah. No? No, it's too close to nine amps. Okay. Because remember, this battery isn't really 12 volts. It's going to be like 12.6 for 15.2. Plus, when the charging system kicks in, the voltage is going to go to 14. When the voltage goes to 14, what's going to change here? The current flow is going to change, right? The resistance isn't going to change. Current flow is going to go up. Voltage goes up, current flow goes up. Let me show you. Single load. It's got four ohms resistance. Coming in here to, I'll just keep the numbers good. That's 12 volts DC. Same circuit down here. You know what to do? I'll say that's 16. Oh, that worked out. Okay. P E I R <clears throat> P E I R. Now I need to point out that the resistance is the same in both of these circuits, right? Okay. All right. Well, we know the voltage is 12 volts here. We know the voltage is 16 volts here. This is just a kind of extreme example, but it, it, it illustrates an important principle. I got four ohms here and I got four ohms there. What's up with the current flow? It is um, four. Oh, Jesus, Jim. On this one? That's it. No. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> oh, you know what I figured out? Oh, my God. You know what I figured out? The mask is the burqa, right? And then you say, that can't possibly be because the burqa is a, a symbol of submission. What? <laughs> The mask. Oh, wow. That's, see? See what happens? Okay, so four times what is 12? Three. Three. Good. Three times 12 is what? 36. 40. 36 watts. 36, good. that's what I okay. said. Four times what is 16? Four. 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 Yeah, see, the current flow went up when the voltage went up. Because the resistance went oh. Four times 16 is what? 64. Uh, 64. 64, which means it's got almost twice the power consumption. Interesting. Yeah. So if I have a nine amp circuit, I'm probably going to put a 15 amp on it. Okay. I mean, it does, unless it's a really critical circuit, I'm going to design it to be able to be capable of uh, handling that. So it has to be a little bit higher than just in case to make make room for the uh, heat and the resistance going up. Yep. Okay. Good. A little bit of room. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. You, might, know. you don't want to be popping fuses when you go over bumps and stuff. No, you don't. Okay. So, yeah. Cause, see, the manufacturers have these protection devices, but they don't want them to be going off all the time. It's so a hot them, day. Yeah. So they're gonna make them. I don't know, substantially higher than they could be if everything was perfect. Because, you know, if I have a if I have a 2020 Cadillac and every time I go over a bump it pops a fuse, I'm gonna be a very angry customer. Yeah, that's right? gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. Then it's gonna be a JD Powers thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I still don't have a registration tag on my freaking Z06 that I bought on the fourth of January. Great dealership you got there, Billy. Yeah, that sucks. Losers. I was going to name them, but you know, then they have YouTube censor my. Uh, who knows? <laughs> you know, I shouldn't talk about crap about YouTube on YouTube. That's probably probably asking. Let's yelp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll definitely yelp them hard. Yeah. Anyways, so my point was, you can see that the amount of voltage in the circuit, if nothing else changes, is going to change the current flow. Okay. So just be aware of that. All right. I don't know if I'm going to do parallel circuits or not. I guess I am. 
All right, so let's go like this. Michelle, why don't you ask you the question you asked everyone else on the break? What? About the barbecue? What? Barbecue? Oh, yeah. uh, we need to have a barbecue or a potluck or something. Mm. Huh. Potluck? I'll bring the luck. Michelle, you're barbecuing? Oh, no. I <laughs> I was just suggesting we should figure out a way to do something like that maybe afterwards. See, well, you coming back for next year? I am, yeah. You should. Yeah. I need and, to. And for yeah. sure. Seriously, it, it doesn't make financial sense not to. It's like buying a... It's like buying an auto insurance policy for 80 bucks. I mean, it's right. Yeah. Definitely coming back then. Besides, besides, you got to understand that this is teaching you about every mechanical thing in the world, and the world's a mechanical thing anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot in this class. Yeah, it seems like it. So hit that electude this week, folks. Got it. T I know it's still working, though. What's it, what? You showed me some tricks. I'll, I'll show you, Anne-Marie. Okay, the electrode. Michelle and I were talking about it. It's not working properly. At least I thought not. Yeah, he showed me. Maybe okay. someone should have been here on time when we went over. I'm the... sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> First time I was late. Okay. So. I'll help you, Emery. All right. Come over tomorrow. Okay. You can help me, guard. Yeah, it does have a couple of quirks that you need to work through. It does. Yeah, it does. So okay. if you want. Oh man, I hate being a nice guy. If you want, I'll be here early before class next week and we will deal with electude issues. Okay. Uh, Nan got on electude. I was happy to be here. Tomorrow, if you know. Okay, so you got this done yet? Oh no, I didn't even know. No. I'm done. No. <laughs> We got two different resistances, so we know that one of those lights is brighter than the other, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But they're both getting 12 volts, which is cool. All right, I'll see y'all next week. What? Adios, amigo. We gotta go fix my daughter's bed. Yeah, you got 12 what? minutes left. What the hell? Shows up late and leaves early. I gotta fix my oh. daughter's bed. Getting tired. Time. Yeah, not, well, this is the first time you've seen this, right? Rudy took my elect electrician classes. Rudy's seen this like 98,000 times <laughs> in two languages. <laughs> yeah, what language? Uh, well, we used to teach it in Spanish and English. It was, I mean. Yeah, but what, what do you teach? <laughs> I was teaching electricians down in you know, <laughs> okay. the question. The question oh. arose. You know, there's a question about doing this class two nights a week, and a question about doing this class on a Saturday, and there's also a question about doing an electrician class. Okay. Yeah, I would like the electrician class. Yeah. 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 It's. I mean, it's good and useful. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we know we got 12 volts everywhere, right? Right. Yep. Parallel circuit. And we know we got two ohms here, and we know we got right. six ohms there. Right. Run the table. Okay. I'm done. Yeah. Six times what is 12? Yeah. Two. Two. Uh, two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Two times what is 12? Six. Six. Six times 12 is what? 72. Two times 12 is what? 24. Okay, now there's two ways we can get the watts. We can either multiply up or we can just add this and this, which equals what? 96. 96 watts. Now, since I have this number, I could just divide down, actually, as far as that goes. 96 divided by 12 is what? 8. Good. 12 divided by 8 is what? 1.5? Yeah, 5. something like that. That's it. Now, here's the thing. How many amps are there right here? Uh, I'm going to say 8. No. no, no, no. I mean, um, wait. How many Sancho's ran in this window? Two. Two. Nope. Eight. Six. What? Nope. Six. Six. Six of them. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was on mute. I didn't get it out. Should have asked the Sancho expert. And then. 
<laughs> How many Sancho's ran in this window? Um, uh, three. Two. Oh, thank you. Yes, two. Sorry. Got it. Okay, so oh what's God. the top oh, yeah. right here? Okay. Eight. Yep. So it goes eight amps there, six amps here, because the only Sancho's are going to here. Six amps okay. here. Mm -hmm. Two amps there. All right. Six amps there. Eight amps here. Yeah? Yeah. Got it. What are you going to use? Um, I oh, what? Said, what? 20? What oh. fuse are you going to use? A 20? Not, not a 20. That's way too no. long. Really? A, 10 or, a 10 or a 12? Not a 10. 15? No? Probably a 15. Yeah, I think I'd use a 15. 15? Yep. Yeah, I mean, the common fuse sizes are 10, 15, 20, oh. some 25s and 30s, some, some 40s and 50s sometimes, but they're going to be maxi fuses. They're not going to be like the normal little ones. Okay, so where are we at, folks? We know. Let's make some rules. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Shoot, not me. I got a big funding thing I got to do. Yeah, I'm just... Circuits. Uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some Diet Mountain Dew. I wish I could fall asleep at this time. Yeah. My problem is fun to stay up late, isn't it? Parallel. Fun to stay up late and forget all your troubles for a minute. So I wish yeah, well, try sleeping with rats crawling under your mattress. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Hell no. But I can't. They dug into my mattress and they were crawling underneath me. I, I had to buy a whole new bed. And now, and now that now that I have a new bed, they're crawling under that one too, and trying to get burrow in it. Oh no! no yeah, no, and I'm terrified of rodents. Like I'm, I'm not sleeping okay. well. Well, talk tomorrow. It's awful, awful. <laughs> Don't any of your friends or neighbors have a dog? I've, I've like tried to pay some of my friends to catch this thing. My cat. Oh, no, cat, right? Yeah. She needs like a dozen cats in her room. My cat's so terrified of it that I have to watch her eat. Yeah, we need more cats than that. The, the cat, no, the cat's not very effective right now. You want to borrow a 22? That was a joke. Well, get a rat trap, a big rat trap. I'm trying everything I can. <laughs> yeah, rat trap. Well, we've done all that. Yeah. We've tried the sticky ones, every kind they make, we've tried them. The electric ones, they're smarter than that. They know no, about the traps. No, really. Put sardines in the trap. They're not that smart. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they like yeah. sardines. I was put thinking sardines about sardines there. Yeah. They don't get it. I have a sardine can. Michelle, I'll take it to you. Oh, I've got some. <laughs> the coronavirus has mutated <laughs> a race of super rats. Well, they, the, the, the they're, than they're not like the regular rats. They're much more aggressive, and they're not afraid of people. <laughs> you got a master splinter. All right. In a parallel circuit, current is additive. Anytime you have a circuit like this, where each bulb is getting the same voltage, current is additive. Yeah? Mm -hmm. that, yeah, you, you add the something. current here and you add the current here. Yeah. This thing right here is called a, well, right this there. thing right here is called a branch. Branch. Like a branch on a tree. Branch one. And this right there is branch two. Okay. Voltage. is the same everywhere. Now, here's where parallel circuits get funky. About resistance. Yeah, we got five minutes, so let's hit it. Look. I got two ohms on this branch, six ohms on this branch, but my total circuit resistance is one and a half. Uh, is that because there's only five minutes left? Total circuit resistance is always less than any individual resistance.
And if you go back to all the parallel circuits we've been doing for about the last 45 minutes, you're going to see that the total circuit resistance is less than the resistance of any of the loads. Okay. Now, my question to you is, if I keep adding bulbs to this circuit, what's going to happen to the total current flow? It stays the same. Mm. No? The batteries um, are the same. We'll go down then. Voltage is going to stay the same. Oh, okay. What's going to happen to the current? It's additive, so it will add up. It'll be higher. It's going to be and eventually the current gets so high that it either pops the fuse or burns through the wire. Yeah. This is what happens when you put too many lights on the same circuit. It's yeah. like in an old house where you put the radio in the bathroom and then you plug in the hair dryer and just boom, right? Yeah. Because it's too much current. Never done that. Yeah. Most of your old houses only have 15 amp circuits and a hair dryer will draw about 13. Yeah. Especially one of the good professional ones. So if you have anything else plugged in like a light, pop yeah so the good thing about this is i had a student that took this lesson and he was actually an it guy and he was going in and he was looking at a server a rack of servers and it was going into one freaking socket and he said you know what there's no way that this is going to be able to handle that much load and sure enough it blew the fuse i mean trip the circuit breaker same thing okay Anyway, folks, it's 8.57, so I need to ask you, how you doing on this? Is it making sense? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Well, we got two good sessions of this left. I mean, I would like to sit around and not do anything on the last day of class and party and, you know, know. make jokes. But I really want to see you guys get the true value that this class is capable of providing. And I think that's been pretty much stripped from you by uh current events yes sir yeah do you know that i do this every day every tuesday and thursday i do this two sessions with high school students and i get about two students each session oh wow yeah they don't value learning which is great because they'll be able to vote in like two years you're an awesome teacher yeah quack Listen to you. you are. I appreciate the words, though. I mean, that's... I want to ask. So Michelle will help me with the electrodes that I got not working right. We talked about it earlier, but um, what do you? Where are we now with the hands-on makeup classes in the shop? I talked to the principal two days ago, and I put the I I reminded him of his position on that. Um, the transmission is done on the red Corvette, so it looks like I'm going to be in there on Saturday. But, you know, if I had you guys in on a Saturday, it would cause a ruckus. They're not having uh, – Anna Maria, what did they tell you about graduation this year? I have not heard anything, so. You will. You will, and it sucks. Oh, well, I mean, my son is a freshman, so I have not oh, heard oh, oh, anything. Oh, man, so. man, I thought he was a senior. No, he's a senior. freshman. That's good, because graduation the way they have it now just sucks. Yeah, that does suck, man. You need like individual Yeah, for your son, Michelle. Yeah. All right, so let me see. So I'm me... just curious about hands-on. I mean, this is all great and all, and all but I'm it. a hands-on person. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm hearing right. it. I'm going to get it. I have to review it. But for what? me, I need to be in there and do it. Or we'll study. Like, we'll study together. That's no, cool. I need to do it and see it. Like. Yeah, we'll study. I, I can help you. All no, right. So actually, here we have. <laughs> what happened? Let's go to engine performance. Chuck, Arnold, are you guys are there? I'm going to have to go over your place. I just got bumped out. What? I just got, I just got bumped out. I see no, you. Because we can still hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I see oh. the fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I don't I, I got to sign in again, so. We hear you, hear you yeah. We still hear you. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, no, you changed I, the screen. I, we can still, I can, hear, no. still see you. I can, I can <laughs> see you. I can see you guys, but I have no screen. Yeah, we have Zoom showing. Yeah, yeah that's what I have. Yeah. You have Zoom showing. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Yeah. And then the people on the side. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There you go. Chuck, How about that? Oh, there you go. I, I'll All right. go over Dave. and watch you and Michelle come over and we can okay. work on cards. I I'll tell you tonight after class. On. All right, Anne Maria. Let me just show you something. Okay. Let's say uh, port fuel injection theory. 
So I'm going to check that and it says, well, you got all these modules. So I'm going to come in here to electric fuel pump. Yeah. Yes. And that was not what I wanted. So let's go. Oh, Cause I'm in students. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm going to go to courses. Uh, I want to go to back here. And I want to go to engine performance. Did you notice it's got diesel engines? It's got engine performance there. And uh, let's go to multi port fuel injection theory. Start the module. See that? Yeah. Okay. Now it's going to ask you find the following components, right? So yeah. mass airflow, I can't really see it because I got this thing in the way. No, that's fine. I get it. Next week, I'll have multiple screens. I promise you. Where's the mass airflow sensor? That? Okay. I don't mm -hmm. know. All right. So then you go through that. Now, Jim says there are <coughs> invisible arrows. Oh, there it is. No, Chuck said that. Invisible arrows. So it's asking you to identify, to find all the parts. Yeah, you finished the lesson. Now you go back. Yes. Come on now. No, but it doesn't say go back, though. Yeah, yeah. Wrong? I don't have that prompt. I, I never have the prompt to go back. Um, let me check. When I do it, it doesn't, and I can take a test, and it just freezes, and it says, my box says check, like check my answers, and right. nothing happens with it. That's what I was it doing. It doesn't too. move. Okay, so just like this, right? Mm, okay. like, I, sorry, it's not that clear box, for right? me, but it, yes, check. Okay, and what it is never the most says go back. It just says check. And when I, and even the check box is not highlighted. Right. That's because you got to check these answers first. Well, I, I do, though. That's the thing is I check the answers. And so I go and click the box check and nothing happens. I mean, that's what the happened check to me. box is not highlighted. All right. Let's check this out. Okay. What's the most important task of the spark plug? The, the, it it yeah. like the fuel. Yeah, it makes the fluid. Provides the spark to ignite the air fuel mixture. Then you hit check yeah. and it says okay, yeah? Uh -huh. No, but see, that, I, that's what I'm trying to say is that Yours that doesn't. check box is not highlighted. And if I check it, I still try to check them my answer. It doesn't do anything. That's what happened to me. Right, Michelle? We were talking uh -huh. about the Bernier. It's like frozen. Like, it's not highlighted as an option. And even though I highlight it or check it, nothing happens. Yeah. That's what was happening to me. Uh, recently, Michelle? Yeah, when I went on the other day. I tried it the day before we, you know, came on. But I didn't have the little number up there that has the two to go to the next one. I didn't yeah. have that. Well, it depends on the lesson whether you're going to have that or not. Okay. Well, Chuck, no, do you well, have a problem? Go to check the answer, and then it, it would just freeze. That's what happened to me. It wouldn't well, go forward. It wouldn't go backward. Nothing. It I think it's because your nothing. internet sucks. That's what I think. Uh, I don't think so. Which part is the spark plug connected to? The ignition coil? Yeah, correct. So okay. I can answer things, but that checkbox never highlights. It doesn't do anything. I don't know what we're doing. It doesn't what tell me if I'm right. It doesn't tell me if I'm wrong. I yeah, can't do next. I can't do check. It just freezes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Shoot. So I did like I thought was it because I didn't finish a module and I went back and then nothing. It's both modules. And I can do maybe the first or two questions and then it freezes. I mean I, what I mean by freezing is that nothing happens after that. I can't yeah, do the checkbox. There's no box that's highlighted like saying this is an option, right? Yeah, that's what happened to me. Yes. So Chuck, do you know how to disconnect the electrical connections on the ignition coils? <laughs> Have you gotten this far? No, I've been doing the basic class where they talked about theory of the radiator, the thermostat, the oil. So well, I haven't gone into more advanced uh, options like we're doing right here. That shouldn't take you long. Have you been able to take the pretests and stuff? All the tests. It gives me the Except score. I walked out of those. Uh, well, there's two categories, and I mean, there's one, the theory, and then after you done with the theory, then they say, okay, you go to the next one above it, it's the test. 
Right. But is the pretest like you take it before you do it or no? No, you do the theory first and okay. after you're done with that, then you that might do the be test. Why. That's probably why. I got well, confused by the, the test me? always sits on the top and the yes. theory is always on the bottom. Yeah. That makes so sense. There's a, there's a, wasn't there a pretest and a post test? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you doing, a uh, theory or a test? I do the theory because the test is all about the theory. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. okay. That sounds about right. I thought I thought because it's pre test and post test, yeah. you do it before you, then you read it and then you do the post after. Well, yeah, you're supposed to, but yeah. I don't care about I don't care about the quizzes. If I was okay. you, I would skip the quizzes and yeah. just I I skip okay. I I like piss past those quizzes because I just want to play with it and I try to like get things wrong, get things right, just to see how it works. It lowers your score. <laughs> but the thing is, well, very low, like 23%. But I figured I would tell him so it doesn't really matter. Oh, I would what? just try to figure it out. But, the thing is, oh. but it doesn't move forward. Oh, do oh, shit. Okay, something's, something's going it's on here. All right, uh, hold on. Oh, All right. All right, classroom. I got to go. I'll see y'all later. Thanks, Daryl. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, I'm this, good. This, this is how you do it. You drag this down like that. Well, at least I thought I do. No. <laughs> I don't remember any dragging in the instructions. No. <laughs> oh, you just yeah. click on it. Oh. Yeah, you click on it. Like it asks you for a part, you click on it. Well, why didn't you tell me that? But no, but oh, sorry. I thought you were in a different screen. Either. And that works. Like the clicking on a part works, but when you're answering questions or something and you can do it, it doesn't move. It doesn't tell you if you're right or wrong. And then when you're done answering whether they're right or wrong, it doesn't move you anywhere. That's what happened to me exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. So okay. and you and uh, like the there's a checkbox that tells you to check your answers. Yeah. And it doesn't highlight. It doesn't tell you that it read it. It didn't tell you that it checked it. It doesn't give you a score. Yeah. Nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's oh, what I'm crazy. getting. Uh, and Chuck, you're not having that problem. No, I mean I I do the theory and then in the theory they kind of give you like a little test. Then I do the actual test, and when you're done, it gives you the percentage of what you, what your score is. Yeah, but I guess I mean I don't know the, you know the steps, but I can't get to that place because when I'm trying to just do the test, like the general testing, it doesn't move forward. Yeah, that's how many so I guess I can't get to a test because it doesn't move me forward. It doesn't tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Like saying, wrong, test again, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You don't have to do everything in order or anything, do you? No, absolutely okay, I not. So. I would not. Right. Yeah, but even but even in within one module, it doesn't move forward. It doesn't even give you the, I guess, it doesn't give you the option of a, te a check your answers. You know when things are highlighted, like, yeah. like this is the next right. step, and it highlights? Mm -hmm. The checkbox doesn't highlight. Hmm. Did it check any of your answers? What was that? Did it check any of your answers? Because it would check mine, but then it wouldn't go after that. It wouldn't go any it further. Does, it, when I go back, I, there's no place for me to check my answers. I try to go back on the screen, and then it's back to pick the mod module again. I mean, I don't know, Roe Cliff, if you can check it, but... I think I have one that has like 12 tests because I can't figure it out. No, I'm like, not moving problems, forward. No. I think I like about 27% or 29% of it because I keep going back with 12 attempts. All right. Well, like I said, well, you know, on, on the test, it only says when you answer the question, whether it's right or wrong, you only get that one shot. You can't but go back. Really? Yeah. You got to go to the next question.